There are three reasons why I like Rodinol. One, it's economical, both in the sense that it's relatively cheap and it's also heavily concentrated, requiring high dilutions. With this stuff, a little goes a long way. Two, the ubiquity. Rodinol has been in production since the late 1800s and it's been a standard in black and white photography. And because of that, it's common for film manufacturers to include development times for Rodinol, which makes it easy to develop and you don't have to stumble around to find development times. And even if they don't, you can always just stand develop it. Three, the shelf life. Rodinol is known for its legendary shelf life. There are plenty of stories of people finding half-empty bottles sitting around for decades and it just works. It's not that I don't believe these stories, I very much believe that Rodinol and cockroaches will be the last two remaining things left on this earth, but rather I wanted to see this for myself. And would you look at that? This dusty ass bottle of Rodinol came into my life a few years ago, and as far as I could tell it's never been opened. And I have full confidence that it'll work, even accounting for the fact that something had separated and settled on the bottom of this bottle, forming this thick cake. When I opened this bottle for the first time, I was met with this rubber stopper. I tried to pull it out, but it was in there pretty good. And then I found out you had to use a syringe to draw the chemistry out. Now, here's what fresh Ronal looks like. It has this translucent color, and while I'm not sure if it gets picked up on camera, it has this slight pink tint to it. And while I wasn't expecting this nice pink color from the old bottle, I sure as hell wasn't expecting it to be sewage colored either. I was still sure it was going to work, but then I picked up the syringe and I rotated it, and it's hard to see, but in about the 10-15 to 15 seconds I let it sit, some of the particulates had already settled. I started to have my doubts. I started to think, like, what if this doesn't work? What if I've been misled all this time? What if this was all just a lie perpetrated by Big Rodinol? There's only one way to find out. Uh, yeah, it just works. Rodinol always comes through. You can always trust it, never question it. Honestly, I was relieved to see it work, but I was still surprised that this nasty looking stuff could still do work. The fact that I could still develop images is cool and all, but the legend is that no matter how old, or how brown, or how chunky Rodinol is, it'll always develop like new. The negatives on the left is old Rodinol, and the ones on the right is fresh Rodinol. At a glance, they look the same. With the exception of a couple of frames where the sun was peeking in and out, the densities in the base look the same as well. At this vantage point, there's nothing that tells me that anything is different. And of course I trichromed it, because why not? One thing I forgot to talk about is the age of this bottle. I actually don't know exactly how old this is, but I have an approximate range. In 1964, Agva and Gavart merged to form Agva Gavart, and this bottle was sold as an Agva Gavart product. Now, I don't know how long it took them to incorporate their new merged name into their branding, so the earliest I think this technically could have been is from 1964, although realistically, maybe a little bit after that. On the other end, it's a little harder to pin down. I read that around the late 70s they made the transition from glass bottles to plastic, and that by the 80s they were only using plastic bottles. So, assuming the range is between 1964 and let's say 1979, it would have made this bottle, at the time of recording, somewhere between 42 to 57 years old. If any of you can help me pinpoint down the age of this bottle, please let me know. And here's also this number on the side, I don't know if it has any meaning, or if it's a date code, production code, whatever. While I was researching Rodinol, I saw that on Adox's website, they state, Compared to R09, Rodinol is more fine-grained while still enhancing sharpness and accutance. They also state that Adox Rodinol is produced according to Agfa's latest Rodinol 2004 formula. I know that new Rodinol and old Rodinol is a thing, with Adox using the newer formula and with this R09 using the old formula, but I never really tested it, and since we're here I thought, might as well. Just ignore this and that, I accidentally opened the back while it was still loaded with film. And this just echoes what people have been saying for decades. Rodinol is Rodinol. Yeah, they changed the formulas a number of times, but it still just basically behaves the same. I was kind of hoping that something would have been noticeably different, but for something that's over a hundred years old to remain this consistent over time, it's something that's kind of amazing. 
But then I started to think, if a liquid developer could potentially last forever, what about other liquid chemistry? I was given this unopened bottle of Ilford Rapid Fixer. I actually emailed Ilford, and they promptly responded telling me that this bottle was manufactured in July 2015, making this over 6 years old. Then they said that it's best not to use it, and that I shouldn't use it. Please don't use it. So I used it. Yeah, this also just kind of worked as well. Now, the difference between this and Rodinol is that I'm not sure what the long-term ramifications are. After the stop bath and fixer, developer has done its job and is no longer part of the process, whereas something that's underfixed, whether through not fixing long enough or using exhausted fixer, or in this case using fixer of unknown strength, it could leave behind undeveloped silver halide crystals which could cause the film to fog over time. But one noticeable thing is that this exposed bit right here is noticeably thinner than usual. It's hard to show on camera, but compared to say like this overexposed bit, when I put my eye up to it, the expired fixer one is just much more transparent. My takeaway from this is that if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to develop film ASAP, but you only have access to a six-year-old unopened bottle of Ilford Rapid Fixer, you could still use it, and you could still get okay results. If you don't care about consistent densities and contrast, and if you just scan it or print it shortly after, and you don't care about keeping the negatives, then this is the perfect solution. Otherwise, just don't use it. Buy fresh fixer. So to wrap this all up, liquid chemistry is more hardier than I thought. I wonder how it'll compare to old powder chemistry.